Hello everyone! Today I'm here to do a book review, and the book I will be reviewing today is Slasher Girls and Monster Boys. This has 14 short stories in it, and it's all edited by April Genevieve Chocolate. I hope I pronounced that right. I'll be reviewing this book, and this is part of my spooky TBR. If you didn't see that, I did a whole spooky TBR of like kind of spooky, scary books I wanted to read, and I read this one. Really enjoyed it. So, like I said, this is 14 short stories in it. So, basically, what I'm going to do is give you an overall rating of the whole book, and then I'm going to dissect each individual short story within it, let you know the rating, and also as a bonus, because if you guys don't know, I'm a huge scaredy cat. This was a huge feat for me because I don't really like scary things because I don't like scary things. So the bonus I'm gonna do is also give you a rating on each individual short story, like I said, but also a creep factor rating. So basically, what's a creep factor rating? It means on a scale of one to five, how much that story creeped me out. And I'm only doing I'm doing this to help the people out there that are scary cats that are really wary about this book. Like, so I just want to help people out there, you know, to let them know which scare which stories are scary which one or not you know because there's a majority there are some that are scary then there's some that are not scary at all in this book so basically you're going to get a rating for each individual story and a creep factor rating because it's just fun and i'll let you know how you can rage my creepy back to it. Overall, I gave this book a four out of five. I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I was gonna like this one as much as I did because I don't like scary things. And a lot of the times, the anthologies that I read, they're okay, they're not amazing. The last anthology I read was Summer Days and Summer Nights and that one kind of fell flat for me, so I was hesitant to pick this one up. But I think this is a perfect book to read right around this time, like right before Halloween. Make sure you read this because it'll give you all the Halloween feels and the spookiness, and it's just a great time to read it, obviously, because it's Halloween. So I did really enjoy it. There were some stories I didn't like. But there were a few stories that I loved and I have to check out the author's work. So, you know, anthologies are great for that. If you haven't really read an author and you read their short story in this, you may love it and you may want to read more books by them and then you will have a new favorite author. It's a book of a trying whole bunch of authors, which is just awesome. So anyway, let's get into each individual rating and creep factor rating. The first short story in this book was The Birds of Azalea Street by Nova... Nova Rain Suma, I hope I pronounced that right. I did really enjoy this one. I feel like it set a good tone for the whole book where it was it was creepy, but it wasn't like super creepy. Like I didn't, it didn't scare me a lot. It definitely had a very interesting writing style to it before, which I know Nova is known for. So overall, I gave this story a three out of five. I did enjoy it. I didn't love it as much as I think I wanted to love it. The creep factor, I gave it a three out of five. It wasn't necessarily super creepy. But the situations that were in this story that was kind of creepy. I know three is kind of, it's like the middle for me when I think of creep factor so it's not super creepy at all. I did enjoy the story. The next short story is In a Forest Dark and Deep by Carrie Ryan and this was one of my favorite stories. This story, oh, like let me just say, while reading this story I was like what the I was like that the whole time. I was like the imagery was so vivid, the writing was so vivid and very just creepy. Like Oh, it was just amazing. I really loved this short story. A creepy kind of Alice in the Alice in Wonderland type of thing, which I love. And also, by the way, after each end of the short story on the last page of said short story, upside down, it'll tell you what inspired this short story. So sometimes it's films, sometimes it's songs, and sometimes it's stories. Well, I don't think it's gonna spoil for you. It's, it's you know, like from the second page, it's kind of a creepy version of Alice in Wonderland, which isn't hard to do because Alice in Wonderland is kind of creepy in itself. But overall, for this reading, I give this one a five out of five. I freaking loved it. It was amazing. As far as creep factor goes, five out of five. So creepy. This one like gave me chills. It was just, I think the vividness and just, it was creepy guys, but it like didn't, it didn't super scare me, but it was really creepy. Okay. The next short story is Emmeline or Emmeline by Kat Winters. This one kind of, I didn't like it as much. It was kind of boring and predictable. wasn't really scary at all, which not all these stories are scary, but I like the ones that I like. I love the ones that were scary, I love the ones that weren't scary. This was just kind of, it was kind of boring for me if I'm honest with you. Like I just was like, it's okay, it was the best. So for all, for overall rating, I gave this one a two out of five. I felt like it was just okay. It could have been a lot better. As far as creep factor goes, I give it a one. It wasn't really creepy at all. The next short story is Verse by Verse by Lee Bardugo. I've never read a full length novel of Lee Bardugo yet, but I have read like the real short stories by now. And this one I liked. I was very confused by it. I had kind of had to reread it twice so I still really didn't get the gist of it. It was interesting. I will say that. Lee Bardugo has a very interesting way of writing. That's not to say it's a bad thing at all but I didn't love this short story. I was expecting to like it because I do like Lee Bardugo's writing a lot because it's so 
interesting, like I said, but this one was just kind of in the middle of the pack for me. I liked it, but I didn't love it, nor did I hate it. So I gave it a three out of five. It was okay. I just wanted more from it. As far as Creep Factor, it was like two and a half, maybe. I think it would have been more if I kind of understood it fully, but maybe it's just my stupidity that I didn't understand it. I don't know. The next story is Hide and Seek by Megan Shepard, and I really, really enjoyed this one. I haven't yet to read a Megan Shepard book, but I have to say, after reading her writing style, I think I have, I think I need to. It's very simplistic, but I liked the story that she told, obviously the short story, but I really liked this one. I just, I wanted a full length novel of this book, honestly. Like if this was a full length novel, even if she kind of would flesh it out into a full length novel and have three separate, three different short stories kind of surrounding the same topic, I think it would be an awesome book and I loved how she just did it. So overall, I give this one a four, four and a half. It was one of my favorites, but it didn't really warrant that five star for me, but I still really enjoyed it. Creep Factor, only one. It wasn't really creepy at all and I still really enjoyed it. So that just goes to show you that yes this book, the cover, looks creepy as mess but not all the stories are going to creep you out immensely. So that one was like one of the least scary ones of all and I really enjoyed it. Then we have The Dark Scary Parts by Daniel Page. This one was okay. It wasn't amazing. I felt like I've kind of read this kind of, not this particular short story before but kind of the same gist gist of it. It was just okay. It was interesting. I will say that. It was interesting. Kept my interest. But I didn't love it. So I only gave that one a 3 out of 5. And far as Creep Factor 2 wasn't, again, really creepy. You kind of knew what was coming. You kind of pieced things together. So it wasn't my favorite of the bunch. It kind of falls to the ladder, honestly. The next short story is the one edited by our author, and that's the Flicker This is such a freaking long title. The Flicker, The Fingers, The Beat, The Sigh. That's like a long name by April Genevieve Chocolate. This one was good. It was very interesting. I could really see how it could be fleshed out into a movie, honestly, not a full length book, but a movie would be interesting. And I think her inspiration was a movie. But the one thing I didn't love about it was the characters in it. They were just very stupid, honestly. They made a lot of stupid decisions, which I especially didn't love the guy in it. He didn't like him, but it was very interesting and the end was very interesting as well. So I give this one a three out of five. Like I said, I liked it. I didn't love it. I was expecting a little bit more because she edited this whole anthology, honestly. And as far as creep factor, you know, two and a half, not really creepy for me at all, honestly. So it's something you can manage. Then we have Fat Girl with a Knife by Jonathan Malbury. What what a title. What a title. This one was very interesting. It is a zombie one. That's like a spoiling thing for you because I've heard Jonathan Mulberry writes a ton of zombie stuff. I really like this one. This one was not really scary at all, but I really liked the main character and how he kind of fleshed out the story and it was really interesting. So this one of four stars. I really enjoyed it. I would like to read a full length novel of it, honestly, because I thought the main character was just awesome. Great factor one, zombies don't scare me. I'm sure if I came across a real one, it scared the mess out of me, but as far as, you know, I've read a lot of zombies and seen them on TV and stuff, so it didn't really creep me out at all. So. The next one is probably my favorite of the whole book, honestly. It's Sleepless by Jay Kristoff. Story, guys. Woo! I felt like my, like, heart and emotions just had a whole freaking went on a roller coaster in these like 35 pages of the short story which is insanity the way that he wrote this story that got me so captivated in as little as 35 pages if that the first half of it i was liking i didn't love i was definitely very intrigued and then he threw a huge curveball at you and it completely shocked me and scared the crap out of me and it was just amazing i loved it and this one has i am format as well in it really the one thing i didn't like about the i am format was the grammar in it. It was horrendous and I, I get so angry when I see that. I thought this story was amazing. It had me captivated. It definitely was creepy for me. I gave this one a 5 out of 5. Like I said, probably my favorite in the whole book. And a creep factor? Four and a half probably. Like the first half wasn't really creepy. The second half, it was just creepy because it just felt real and it, it just like it's one of those things. It's like this could happen to you and it just those those are the most scary to me. <laughs> Next up we have M by Stefan Bachman. This was very slow. I didn't really enjoy it. I will say this one I think is the one that had the blind protagonist which was very interesting. I haven't read a book where it follows a blind protagonist so I did enjoy that but I felt the story kind of went slow which I don't think you have time to do when you only have 40 pages to tell said story. So overall I gave this one a 2 out of 5. It was probably one of my least favorite ones. I liked the whole arc. I would have been more captivated if it would have been fleshed out more and better honestly. And Creep Factor it was two and a half. There were some parts that was like a little bit of imagery that was kind of creepy, honestly. The next one is The Girl with Had a Face by Marie Lu. Arguably one of the most creepy ones in this whole book. I'll tell you at the end which ones I thought were most creepy. This one was probably at the top for me. Like, 
I'd say no. I'm gonna say for sure this one was the most creepy for me, honestly. And this one was so amazing. I knew going into this, a lot of people were saying their favorites were by Jay Kristoff and Marie Lu, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't think I would like Jay Kristoff as much as I did. Obviously, I freaking did. But Marie Lu, I've read her stuff before, and I really liked it. This story was so freaking intense like it was so intense I was so enthralled in it this is not a story to read before bedtime believe you me I made that mistake luckily I didn't have any nightmares but just do yourself a favor and don't read this before bedtime that particular story because it will it will not do good for you guys it will not I don't know why I did that but it will not but I did really love the story it was amazing I felt like it was, the art was amazing the plot was amazing she ended it even more amazing so overall I gave this one a five out of five uh, I was one of my favorite of the whole books and it was one of my favorite stories of the whole book and I just loved it so very much as far as creep factor goes I gave it a five this was probably the creepiest for me like it was creep on it was creepy and I it was just creepy the next one is a girl who dreamed of snow by by McCormick Templeman. This one was more of a fantasy than like a scary one at all, which was interesting, but it wasn't really a creepy tale for me at all. It definitely had its moments where it was kind of creepy, but overall it didn't really creep me out a lot. It's an okay book. I think it could have been, I think this could be a full length knowledge. The author could really flesh out what they wanted and really go into detail, but I did like it. I didn't love it. So I only gave it a three out of five. It was just kind of middle of the pack for me, like I've said before. And as far as creep factor ratings, only two. It wasn't really creepy. Maybe one and a half, honestly. It wasn't creepy at all. Then we have Stitches by A.J. Howard, another one of my favorites of this book. I really like this book, obviously, guys. I, I really liked it. Um, <laughs> I This one, I will say, it's probably the one that is most gruesome as far as like gore and stuff so if you're really not good about reading gory and all that kind of stuff which I'm really not good at honestly just be wary about going into this one I will say the plot was very very interesting and the way it developed and the way it ended I thought was just phenomenal so I gave this one a five out of five I really love this one I would love to see it as a full-length book I think it could have been I think it could be awesome as a full-length book creep factor I'll give it a four just because of the gore like there were some scenes I was like kind of gross kind of gross <laughs> but I really enjoyed this and one. the last short story is on the i5 by Kendar Blake and I was expecting more from this not because I've read anything by Kendar Blake but I know she's I know she writes horror really well from what I've heard like really well she wrote the Anadress and Blood duology I was expecting a lot more this one was just okay I didn't really find it very interesting I think it could have been better if she had a little bit more pages but I just found it okay. I really wanted more from it. Um, I just, I wanted more from it is all I really can say. So I gave it a 2 out of 5. I didn't love it as much as I think I wanted to. And Creep Factor, I gave it a 2, 2.5 just because it could happen, like, I, it could happen in real life, which honestly creeps me out. All 13 short stories fleshed out for you of what I thought, the Creep Factor ratings. Very happy I read it. And I'd say to people that are very wary of scary things, if I can read this, so can you. Just take your time with it. I read like two a night, you know, not to, I didn't want to read this all at once and immerse myself in a whole and a whole tank full of scariness. I wanted to just wait in the water slowly at a time with it. So if you're wary about being scared and stuff, you can read this book, no problem. Like I said, the majority of these books, a majority of these short stories were not really scary at all, and they were some of my favorites. So, so if you want to know my favorite short stories of all in this book, I would say definitely In the Forest Dark and Deep by Karen Ryan, just because of the vivid imagery that that was, and it was just super creepy, as well as, well as Hide and Seek by Megan Shepard, so that's two. Sleepless by Jay Kristoff was probably, I feel like I can't, I feel like it was my favorite. I want to say it was my favorite. It's the one that's really stuck with me the most, as well as The Girl Without a Face by Marie Lu. Those four were just the best of the best, honestly. Probably my favorite two would be Sleepless and The Girl Without a Face because I just keep thinking about them, honestly, and it kind of scares me when I think about them. As far as my least favorite, honestly, I would have to say Emmeline was really just kind of fell short for me as well as well as on the i95 that was just kind of boring those two i think those two were the least my least favorite of the bunch they're not necessarily bad they just weren't my cup of tea and so if you have read this book please let me know what was your favorite short stories in it what were your least favorite short stories let's talk about it all in the comments and if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and i will see you in my next one bye